Hi, everyone. Welcome to Prayer Time. I'm Pastor Mark. Thank you for joining me as we look in Matthew chapter 13 tonight. Uh, what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about is really something that's been practiced recently in the springtime. It astounds me how I'm always kind of anticipatory of what my yard is going to do, but always disappointed by it whenever things get a little bit warmer. I've learned that there's really two things that have to be done to a yard in order for it to look good. One is you have to sow seed and you have to control the weeds. There has to be some form of weed control. So I think it's very worthwhile to remember that as we look into God's Word tonight in Matthew chapter 13, because Jesus is going to tell a parable that many of us probably have heard or know pretty well. He talks about a, a farmer who goes out to sow seed. And if you look in chapter 13, it begins in the third verse of chapter 13. He's telling this parable about a farmer who goes out to sow his seed. Now, there's four different locales where he sows this seed. It's the very same seed, which Jesus eventually tells his disciples is basically the word of God. Every one of them gets the same type of seed. If we go out and we sow grass seed or we go out and, and sow corn or sow some sort of vegetable, you know, we can sow it in many different places and you might have more success in one location than another. You, If you're like me, you probably have several places in your yard where it's kind of rocky and it just doesn't seem to grow as well, grass seed and the like. So we understand a little bit about what Jesus is saying here. He talks about it basically, again, breaking it down into four parts. One place where the farmer sows seed is where it's a rocky path and the birds come and they eat it up. The second place, or rather, I'm sorry, it's on the path. The second place is on a rocky, in rocky places where it doesn't have a lot of soil. So he says it sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. In other words, the first group, the birds came, took the seed away. It wasn't even smooth enough. It was just kind of like sowing it on the patio, if you will. The birds come, they eat it up and take it away. And then the next one was rocky and it sprung up quick, but it had no root. The sun scorched it. But what I really want to focus on is the third group. Uh, when you look at that beginning with verse 7, other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. And whenever you think about choking the plants or choking the yard, I always think about weeds. That's what they do. So it's important that the seed is sown because without sowing the seed, there won't be any sort of plant, healthy plant, whether it's flowers, whether it's vegetables, or whether it's grass. But if you don't control the weeds, then you're going to have another problem because it's going to choke the good seed. And he goes on when he's explaining that to his disciples, he talks about, uh, if you go all the way over to verse 22, he says, the seed falling among the thorns, or we can say weeds because it's choking, refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. Now, of course, he tells later on that there is seed that falls on good ground and it springs forth and, and creates a tremendous harvest or a great crop. But we're focusing on that third group, the seed that falls uh, among the thorns, among the weeds. What do we do about that? Is there any way to control the weeds? Well, first of all, I think we need to look at it from a personal standpoint. Jesus talks about the deceitfulness of wealth and the worries of this life. If we are thinking about God's word and we plant it in our hearts, then it should start to produce something that's fruitful within us that causes the worries and the deceitfulness of wealth in this life to sort of fade to the background. Otherwise, we spend a lot of time depriving ourselves of the seed to pursue those things which don't last. And if we get too much of those things in our lives to where it chokes the fruitfulness of God's word out of us, then we in turn can't produce a crop within ourselves, being faithful and fruitful and being able to multiply in the way we share the gospel. And it also will hurt our places of worship because we can't contribute to it. We can't uh, help uh, lead others to the Lord. We can't even do it in our everyday life. So it's important that we control the amount of weeds that we let creep into our lives. And don't they creep into it? You know, you look at your yard one day and it seems like everything looks great and beautiful and pristine. Then the next day there's weeds popping up all over the place. Sometimes that's what happens in our hearts. There's just weeds that just start coming out of nowhere. You ever notice how there's all different sorts of weeds in the yard that choke your grass? There's all sorts of things Satan throws into your life. And he does it in a very subtle way. I talked about that this morning in our sermon. He does it in a very subtle way to where all of a the sudden they're just there. And we need to make sure we get those weeds out of, out of the way. We get them, we get rid of them. 
Interestingly enough, at the end of chapter 13 of Matthew, Jesus tells another parable, or it's kind of a parable, but he, he, he's, it, it's a story that's very similar to the one about sowing. But he talks about how, if you look in uh, verse 24, he says, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. Think of Satan that way. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? Verse 29, No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. He tells them instead to let both grow together, and then at the harvest, collect the bundles of wheat, and then collect more of God's word so that we can be effective as witnesses to God. And we can be effective not only as individuals in the way that we live, but in the way that we influence others to live and to meet the Lord. Are you weed-filled, or are you ready to pull the weeds out so that you can have a nice area with rich ground to produce a tremendous harvest as you sow God's word into your life and into your heart? Remember, weeds will come out from all over the place if we're not completely rooted in the Word of God. Let's sow the seed of righteousness into our hearts, spending time with Him in our devotions, in our prayer time, and in our reading of God's Word. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you so much for the Word that you've given us. May we learn from this lesson. And let us make every effort we can to get rid of that which keeps us away from being the Christians we should be and helping to grow the kingdom. 